Chris Topic from EvolutionGreen.com here with Tom Rand at the Community Power Conference. Tom, very interesting talk to this morning. Can you give me um, the synthesis of, of your key messages from this morning's talk? Sure, 30 seconds or less, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, essentially, it's a three-step argument. One, it is absolutely necessary, non-negotiable, that we decarbon our economy and we do it quickly. Two, lucky for us it's possible. We've largely invented what we need. It's a matter of deploying it. But three, uh, the bad news is, is that it will be very, very, very difficult, mainly because of the soft problems we have to solve in terms of political will, capital, and so on, and just the sheer scale of technology we need to deploy. This is the larger scale, up, the largest infrastructure built in human history, and that's what makes it difficult. And uh, something that resonated with me is the competitiveness of our society. Can you just touch on what's happening in Ontario and sure. the opportunity it, it affords? Well, I think the lowest hanging fruit on the carbon tree is energy efficiency. It's the least sexy of clean tech, right? It's cool to build windmills and solar panels, and I, it definitely is cool. <laughs> but efficiency is the undersung hero. There's no credible forecast about reducing carbon that doesn't have at least a third to a half of that coming from efficiency. And I differentiate efficiency from conservation. Conservation is Jimmy Carter in the White House wearing a woolly sweater, doing without something for noble purpose. Efficiency is doing something smarter with the same result. The geothermal heating and cooling, just as comfortable a building, just that it's a much smarter way of heating or cooling that building. So efficiency to me is, is very low hanging fruit, but it's also an economic driver. Japan and Germany use half the energy per unit of GDP that we do. So they clearly have already hedged their bets against a energy constrained future. We haven't. So we're highly exposed to uh, turbulence in the energy markets because we use twice the energy per unit of GDP than they do. And so that's really an argument about economic competitiveness, global economic competitiveness, not wearing a sweater. And uh, so where can we find out about uh, Tom Rand and about uh, kicking the fossil fuel habit? TomRand.net. Okay. And uh, the last question, how is Ontario poised right now with the Green Energy and Economy Act uh, to take advantage of this changing global landscape? Sure. Uh, in my view, the Green Energy Act is the most progressive legislation in North America. It is not an understatement to say that the world is watching. If you go to California, they're talking about Ontario. If you go to Germany, they're talking about Ontario. So we're clearly positioned in a, in a, in a, in a leadership position. We're clearly in a leadership, leadership position. But it's a lot of risk right now in terms of political risk. Tim Hudak of the Conservative Party is already talking about gutting the act. Um, and really the, the Green Energy Act is not so much about getting green electrons onto the grid as it is about seeding an industry, gaining some a first mover advantage, or at this point probably third or fourth mover advantage, but still an early advantage in selling technology to the rest of the world in what will be the largest infrastructure built in human history. And that's the opportunity that we're unlocking the question is whether we have the political stability to continue down that road or whether we'll get sideswiped by the Conservatives. And so at the, at the base of this is the quality of life of Ontarians near and long term. So, um, you know, really, can, how, how, how should we frame this to the people who are, let's say, engaged about uh, the misallocation of money for smart meters or how we're getting gouged at 80 cents a kilowatt? Yeah, well, I think, you, I think the bigger picture is, look, jurisdictions will be a net seller or a net, a net buyer of clean tech, right? Just like countries are net buyers and sellers of cars, right? And Ontario made a lot of money selling a lot of cars. Uh, well, the next generation of technologies that we need to be able to sell to the rest of the world is clean tech. And if we're not going to be sellers, we're going to be a buyer because at the end of the day, we will decarbon on nature's terms or our terms. We will decarbon. And the question is only whether or not we are able to build industries that are competitive globally in that marketplace. So ultimately, it's about our economic competitiveness and, and jobs for the next 20 or 30 years. Thanks very much, Tom. You're welcome. All right.